What's up Alex Bros? In this video we're going to discuss the domain of a composition function as well as do an example. So now that we know how to compose two functions together uh, it, it, it's going to behoove us to uh, de determine the domain of the resulting function that we get via the process of composition. And to kind of uh, motivate this topic, uh, I, I have uh, this function, or I'm sorry, this composition notation right here, and I, I just want to remind you of how things um, operate with it. Uh, so if we were to pick a particular value of x, so let, let's say that this is f of g of x, which leads to this notation. Uh, if we were to pick a particular value of x, it would first have to get plugged into the function g of x, and then this will produce a particular output that becomes an input of the function f of x. So we got to be careful about what's happening throughout this process. Uh, first and foremost, you know, we got to be sure that whatever value of x we're starting out with is in the domain of the function g of x. So when it, when it comes to evaluating a composition function, uh, two things need to happen. Number one, <coughs> the value of x that you're plugging in initially has to be in the domain of g of x. And I think that that's pretty clear. Um, but what, not, what might not be as clear is what happens with uh, the output that you get. Um, the output that you get by plugging your specific value of x into g of x uh, needs to be an output that is in the domain of the function f of x. So there, there are going to be some cases where it's okay to plug a number into g of x, but the output that it produces is not an okay number to plug into f of x. So for this reason, um, there are uh, two things that we want to uh, keep at the forefront of our minds when finding the domain of a composition function. Uh, the domain of a composition function uh, ends up being an intersection and uh, the intersection is between two number lines and the first of those number lines is the domain of what I like to call the inner function and in this case that would be uh, g of x and then uh, we have to intersect that number line with uh, the number line for the domain of the new composition function, which um, th what I mean by the new function is uh, the, the function that results from the operation of composition. So, th so that would be the domain of basically the end result of plugging g of x into uh, f of x. That's what I refer to as my new uh, function. Okay, <clears throat> so with that, I'd like to do an example. It says, let f of x equal the square root of x minus 5, and g of x equal 2x plus 1. We've got two things on the docket here. Number one, we want to figure out the composition function, and then we want to figure out its domain. Let's start with part one, where they want f of g of x. Keep in mind that this can be rewritten as f parentheses g of x, meaning that we have to take the expression 2x plus 1 and plug it into our function f of x. So visually we're, we're taking 2x plus 1 and plugging it into the square root functions uh, x. So instead of the square root of x minus 5, it's going to be the square root of quantity 2x plus 1 minus 5. And that simplifies as the square root of 2x minus 4. And this would be uh, as far as we'd have to go in terms of the composition function. So let's move on to finding the domain of the composition function. 
what do we mean by d inner in this bullet point? Well, uh, what we mean by that is the domain of the function that was plugged in. And looking at our work here, the function that was plugged in was 2x plus 1. Now the domain for 2x plus 1, since it doesn't involve division by 0 or any square roots, uh, the domain would be all real numbers. So I would shade the entire number line here. That would be the domain of the inner function. And what do we mean by d nu? Uh, well, d nu refers to our resulting composition function once things were simplified. Now do keep in mind that this is a square root function and we have to be careful about the values that the um, radicand uh, give us, or in other words, the values that the expression inside the square root gives us. We need to be sure that 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, which if you saw for x here means that we're only allowed to have x values that are greater than or equal to 2 being plugged into this um, new function. So if we draft up a number line for that, we would put 2 on the number line. We would shade to the right and then put a bracket on the 2 because we can include the 2 as a value of x. Now what we have to do is form the intersection of these two number lines and the intersection is going to yield the official domain for this composition function. So what we're going to have to do is find the intersection of these two number lines and one way that you can do that is to just draw a uh, vertical dashed line uh, going through both number lines and any specific x values that you put on them. So in this case, uh, there's a specific x value of 2 placed on the uh, d nu uh, function's uh, number line. And so what I'm going to do is draw a vertical dashed line going through both number lines so that it also goes through the 2 on the second number line. And you'll notice that um, the intersection between these two number lines uh, is the part of the number line that's to the right of x equals 2. But uh, the number 2 itself is also a part of the intersection because uh, that's uh, being included on both number lines. So long story short, the domain for this composition function would consist of x values that start at 2 and are larger than 2. So any value of x that's greater than or equal to 2 is going to be the domain of our composition function. So in interval notation that's bracket 2 comma infinity. All right. So that's how we find the comp I'm sorry, the domain of a composition function. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.